welcome to The Secret Place with Stephanie. I'm so glad you're here. If this is your first time, um, just sit back. I have about a, a minute's worth of uh, reading to do for you from a fantastic book that maybe you're familiar with, A Testament of Devotion by 20th century Christian and philosopher Thomas Kelly. Um, this is on page 97, and he's talking about um, a rev revolutionary way of life that is different than just walking through the steps and the phases of a religious way of life. Here's what he has to, has to say. I think it is clear that I'm talking about a revolutionary way of living. Religion isn't something to be added to our other duties and thus make our lives yet more complex. The life with God is the center of life and all else is remodeled and integrated by it. It gives the singleness of I, the most important thing is not to be perpetually passing out cups of cold water to a thirsty world. We can get so fearfully busy trying to carry out the second great commandment, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, that we are underdeveloped in our devoted love to God. But we must love God as well as neighbor. These things ye ought to have done and not to have left the other only partially done. There is a way of life so hid with Christ in God that in the midst of the day's busyness, one is inwardly lifting brief prayers, short ejaculations of praise, subdued whispers of adoration and tender love to the beyond that is within. Do you love Thomas Kelly yet? Oh, I urge you to get this book. It's still available. It's it's really so rich. Um, so he's talking about, of course, that hidden place. I call it the secret place from Psalm, Psalm 91, the, the secret place of the Most High God that the psalmist calls it. Paul called it this, um, the hidden place, this place within us that we, we are with God. It's hidden from sight, hidden from our own sight and hidden from the sight of others. But it can be seen, it can be manifest and exhibited in so many ways. Um, this hidden place is, as Kelly says, the most important place to be. It's the most important thing to be. And he says something that I think is rather radical, especially in the um, the modern to late modern time that we that we are all living in. That you know we shouldn't get all vexed and uh, upset about perpetually passing out a cup of water to someone who is thirsty. That's pretty radical, because we need to be doing the works of God. We need to be doing the works that serve others. We need to be thinking beyond ourselves and our own families of what others might need and how we might help, right? Well, he's not saying that we shouldn't do that. Uh, absolutely not. But he's saying we get preoccupied with that and forget the first part, to love the Lord our God with our whole mind, our heart, our soul, everything that is within us. And now it's easy to say, and it's less complex to say, well, yes, the way I do that is by loving my neighbor. And I would say that that's true as well. The way we show our love for God, the way we manifest the love of God and let the love, the true love of God flow through us is as we do for our neighbor, as we pray for our neighbor, as we give to our neighbor, as we consider our neighbor. But Kelly is saying, and I'm, I'm agreeing with it wholeheartedly, that we can get so um, fixed on that second part that we forget the better part. Does it remind you of someone? How about Martha and Mary? Um, we don't want to forget that part of loving him. I remember I, I was walking with Christ for about 15 years. Um, like when I say walking with Christ, I mean walking in, a, in a, an acute awareness that I wanted to follow him and I was seeking him. That's what I mean. If, if, if you're new to this little video uh, and you say, what does it mean you're walking with Christ? He lived 2,000 years ago. Uh, walking with him in the spirit, all right? Um, and I started to get very depressed. It was, a, it was about 15 years in. Um, I had a lovely life, three kids, um, loving husband. Uh, you know, I just was so depressed because I thought, here I am. I'm leading the songs in our church. Um, you know, singing in a band, I'm writing stories, I'm doing kind of like all wonderful things that I had always hoped to do, you know, as well as being a full-time mom and, and caring for my three beautiful children. And I found myself getting so 
depressed because I was so busy and doing so many religious things, not for the sake of being religious to fulfill my religious obligation, but just I wanted to. I wanted to serve. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to engage. I wanted to be part of a beloved community. I wanted to to give and receive back and forth. But I was so busy with religious things that I started questioning God. Lord, I'm singing all these songs like, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. I don't feel love. I don't feel love for you. How did I get here? How do I love you? How do I show you love? How do I? And it was a ter- it was a terrible time. Of course, nobody knew it because I never talked about it because you don't talk about these things, at least in circles I was moving in back then. We didn't talk about these things, but I really talked to the Lord about it. It became a big um, part of my daily and regular prayer as well as for other people too. But I would say, Lord, increase my love for you. Show me how to love you. Show me how how I can love you with a love that feels true and real. Yes, obeying, obeying the commandments, endeavoring to obey the commandments. I understand that, Lord, but show me how to love you. Unlock whatever is locked up inside of me that makes me feel deserty and stale and not quite phony, but not as authentic and genuine as I would like to. I mean, I could say, I love my husband. I love my friends. I love my kids. And you feel that love, right? But I was like saying, I love you, Lord, in prayer and in song. And there was no emotion that went along with it. I'm not here today, and I don't think Kelly is, to try to tell us to become emotional. But we can block off that part of our lives and miss out on on the depth of love that is available to us from God as we enter in more into like a give and take of love with him. Well, in in pieces here and there over the last five years, I've told you guys stories about how the Lord unlocked that love inside of me. And I, you know, I'm sure I will continue to today, but that's not so much what today's video is about. It's really more about remembering that um, we need to remember God as well as our neighbor and understand that largely what we experience with God will be hidden to the world. Others won't see it. And it will even be hidden sometimes to us ourselves. Even since that time, since the Lord answered my prayer and I began to move in a greater love for him, in a felt love for my God who created me, there have been times, and there have been plenty of times, where I've walked through, I've walked through desert, I've walked through stale times, I've walked through times where I've said, God, where are you? You are not exempt, my friend. If you're feeling that way today, I urge you to let the tears flow. I urge you to talk this out with God. Don't be afraid. God is not there standing behind some veil waiting for you to fail or will be horrified to hear how you feel about something, how far away you might feel from him. He's there for you and he's with you and he loves you. And that hiddenness that hiddenness in Christ is actually a very good thing. It's stable. It's true. It's a rock. It cannot be touched. It cannot be changed by your feelings, by your high emotions or your low emotions. It's solid. He is the rock. He is the rock of our salvation. Stand on that rock with me today, going forward into the week. And let's remember that we are both children of God. We're creatures made by the hand of a great and mighty creator. And although we don't ever understand everything and honestly don't understand much, we can know his love and we can put that pursuit first in our life. Bless you today. Have a wonderful day. Even if it's filled with tears, bring them to the Lord. And I'll see you again, I hope, on the next time we meet. Bye now.